Even a four-year-old entrepreneur understands that it doesn't matter how good your idea is if nobody knows. It's not simply enough to set up your stall. And yet that's exactly what we do. We take our idea, our innovation, our product, our service, and we try to make people pay attention to it. We try to sell them on the facts, the features and the benefits. We try to change what they think so we can change what they do. We're absolutely inundated with thousands of marketing messages every day, most of which we choose to ignore. So clearly, information in isolation is not enough. Here's the nub of spreading ideas. It doesn't matter how good your idea is if nobody cares. People don't actually buy your idea, they buy into how it makes them feel. I wonder if you knew that 95% of your decisions are made unconsciously without using reason or logic. So trying to persuade me to buy a lemonade with the facts is largely a waste of time. We're so busy, we're so, so busy trying to sell people on the facts that we forget what's scarce. And the one question we consistently forget to ask is, why will anyone care about this? Now, I can see there are some left brain logical people in the audience who are thinking, yeah, sure, right. But let's just think about this for a second. Bottled water, feeling or logic. 70% dark chocolate, feeling or logic. The iPad mini, red roses on Valentine's Day, 12 months gym membership in January, <laughs> feeling or logic. <laughs> Tickets to a TED conference when we don't even know who the speakers are. <laughs> we, we all did that, guys. The path to success is literally littered with ideas that ha just haven't flown. Back in 2001, Dean Kamen's Segway was lauded as being bigger than the internet. And yet, 11 years on, we're not convinced. Now, these guys had all the ducks in a row. They had funding, they had a unique idea, they had PR coming out of their ears. And look what happened. Contrast that with the brilliant story of the invention of the humble shopping trolley. 75 years ago, this guy in Oklahoma who had a chain of supermarkets saw that his customers had a problem. He noticed that when they were shopping and their baskets became too heavy or too full, they stopped shopping altogether. So clearly, their problem was his problem too. So he thought, I better set about solving this. So what he did was he got, a, got together a prototype with a couple of folding wooden chairs. And a year and several iterations later, he launched the thing into his store. And you can guess what happened. Everybody absolutely hated it. The guys just thought it made them look too soft. The women who had to push prams around all day decided this was just like hard work, so they weren't going to adopt it. In fact, the only people who were using it was the elderly, and that just added to the stigma of the whole thing. <laughs> So Mr. Goldman, you know, not to be defeated, he wanted this idea to work, be good for his business, went back to the drawing board and he just changed one thing. Here's what he did. He hired men and women of different ages, 20s, 30s and 40s, to walk up and down the front aisles of the store pushing their trolleys. <laughs> And now when the assistant offered the trolley to the person at the front, the shoppers who were coming into the store, she said to them, would you like to use one of our new basket carriers? Look, everyone else is using them. <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is history. I think what Mr. Goldman hit on 75 years ago was the secret to spreading ideas. It's a marketing model I call the fortune cookie principle. Every product, every idea, every innovation has two elements. The cookie, and then there's the fortune. The cookie is the commodity, the tangible, the thing that you put in your shop window. And then there's the fortune, the thing that changes how people feel, the, things that, the thing that moves them to act. It's your vision, your values, your purpose, and your story. Now, we all know that fortune cookies taste really very average, but we love them. <laughs> and what I see every day is that marketers 
spend a lot of time trying to sell the cookie when what they really should be doing is finding a better way to tell the story of the fortune. I have seen the fortune cookie principle used to sell everything from diamonds to water projects in Africa, from computers to 70% dark chocolate. I've even seen it used to sell a pile of old rubbish. Justin Genak was a designer. He was interning at MTV as a designer in 2001. And here's what happened. Somebody made this throwaway remark about how design, packaging design, didn't mean anything. So Justin set out to prove them wrong. Here's what he did. He invented this product, New York City garbage, hand-picked on the fertile streets of New York, New York. <laughs> So here's what Justin does. He goes out, he picks the garbage, he seals it in this plastic container, he signs and dates it, and then he goes out and sells it. When he first started selling these things as a student, he sold them sitting on a crate for 10 bucks. That was fine. Suddenly the idea caught on. He raised the price to $25 to curb demand. And eventually, he started charging $50 for these things. And what he told me was this. When they were $10, people said to him, oh, that's, that's a fun idea. When they were $25, people decided, you know what? This is a really cool New York City souvenir. By the time he was charging $50, people decided this was art. So they're collecting them now. <laughs> proof that you need to change how people feel, not what they think and not what they do. In 1997, a young CEO was launching a new advertising campaign, and here's what he said to his team. Marketing is all about values. We're not about making boxes for people to get their work done, although we do that well. We believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. And then he played the Think Different campaign, which showed not a single one of the company's products and began with the words, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the round pegs in the square holes. Steve Jobs went on to make Apple the most valuable company in the world, not just by changing how we think, but changing how we work, how we live, and how we communicate. He did that not by giving us a 32 megabyte device. He did that by giving us a thousand songs in our pocket. He didn't just give us video calls. He gave us FaceTime with Grandpa. And here's the thing. You can't change the world with your idea in isolation. You need to bring people along with you. And that's why we're all here together today. <coughs> so go out there. Don't just change what people think. Change what people feel, and then change what they do. Thank you.